Hey, you're listening to the Holistic Travel Nurse. Um, if you're into holistic health, you're going to want to listen and stay tuned. Or if you're watching this, if we have it recorded, I do have it up in my note. I have a special guest on April. She's the founder and president of the Newport Beach chapter of Holistic Chambers of Commerce. April is an award-winning coach and hypnotherapist in Orange County, California. Kind of a hot spot right now. As we're recording this, uh, it is April 5th. And it feels like the world is nuts. <laughs> and it feels like there's a um, big sense of fear and a big sense of people um, don't have understanding of what everything that's going on right now. Um, and I'm in the front lines of it all. So we might talk about that too, but we want to get April's story because April's story to getting into holistic health and natural healing is, you'll, I think you'll be able to connect to maybe why you should look into it if you aren't or pursue it more and educate yourself more. So thank you, April, for being on and sharing this story. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you both for having me and thank you for your service and putting yourself on the front lines and at risk every day. The, the whole nation is praying for people like you and all of our frontline people. Thank you and bless you and bless your family. And I pray a hedge of protection over you and radiant blessing and protection over you and guarding your family during this pandemic. You matter so much to us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Tell me what kind of got you so, into health. So it's interesting is I lived, I was probably always kind of half interested in this, um, but this is like in the dark ages before the internet where it's like, where on earth could I find things? I literally remember growing up in Princeton, New Jersey. Yes, the, where the university is. Growing up in Princeton, New Jersey back in early high school. I must have been like 13, 14 years old. And I remember we were just, it was kind of, it's like I was not a hippie kid. Um, there was just sort of that being interested in natural things. And I remember going to the little local health food store, you know, and I didn't know a thing. And I remember just like, you would like buy anything because we didn't even know where to start when we were kids. And fast forward later, I'm living in San Francisco. We actually have, I cannot remember the name of it. It's something like Common Grounds or one of those sort of magazines that came out monthly. And it had information and there were classes. And I remember I just started to take these things and I took some classes. I was always interested. And I did it probably ended up approaching more from the spiritual side with becoming a hypnotherapist, which is also very scientific. I don't need to make it, you know, some people make it woo-woo, and I can do woo-woo if you want to. Uh, it's very scientific. It's, I later met my late husband who developed cancer. And he was the last man in the world when you would see him visually. He's kind of conservative, born-again Christian. I am too. It's just like on the surface, it's like he was not looking like the kind of guy you'd be expecting to go look for things. He had already had a round with cancer. He had found things through mail order where he was doing some natural approaches to uh, combating his cancer. He had already got done radiation. He was doing all that. He was working on how could he rebuild the decimates your immune system. I know you know this, but I'm saying this for everyone else is that all the cancer treatments decimate your immune system. And so he, and it's not just like, oh, take a vitamin for a week. It's like long term decimation. So he was doing what he could with some chlorophyll supplements and palmetto, salt palmetto, just a bunch of supplements that he was taking to rebuild his immune system. So when that really got me into caring deeply about self-directed options, and it wasn't that I don't disparage Western medicine. I'm like, God bless. I, I, I use it for things. I love that it's there. The, the two of us, uh, Jim and I, both have very strong, it's a core value of kind of that let me do it myself, that self-directed, I want to choose and pick it myself and learn about this, at that kind of value. So that was one of the things that really got me interested in holistic options. I don't want to say everything out there is perfect, but it's like, 
we wanted to know things that didn't have massive side effects that didn't go against, didn't kill and fight my body at the same time that I'm trying to get well again. Yeah. And so that was all you let, that's what kind of got you started. How many years ago was that? That was, so Jim, that was 23 years ago originally and now, and he's been passed now for 20 years. Um, so it really planted the seeds. And, and there's like also sort of personal growth things that I did over the years where the people who were there invariably were, there's always a percentage who were there who were dealing with the health obstacles or opportunities, things like cancer, major health issues. And I, you know, I can't think of like other ones off the top of my head, but not just cancer. It was a number of things where they were looking for that whole person approach to health. And that's been so strong in me now for that really more than 20 years. But I really see the seed of it from 40 years ago in my life. Okay. And then you started using oils. And what time when did you start using essential oils? When was that about in your life? I literally really where I got serious with it was this past October, just uh, six months ago. And I kind of, I like to make this joke about it. Uh, because I lived in San Francisco, everyone thinks all of San Francisco is so woo-woo and like everyone's so hippie and like everyone's doing supernatural things like it's in the air. And, you know, there's a culture of that being very well accepted. And I knew a woman uh, 10 years ago, nine years ago, where she did, um, can I mention another company? Oh, is it okay? I don't really want to badmouth them. So there, she, she did oils with another place. And, but I don't think I ever, and I was with her in person. I don't think I ever got to smell them. She just talked about them. And that was always it. I always kind of heard it that well, they're kind of nice. And, and that was really all I ever experienced with it was just kind of nice. And, and I remember literally hearing like a year ago about doTERRA being different. It was, you know, the oils are stronger. The oils are this. And I was like, uh-huh. You know, it was all sort of like laying the groundwork. Until I had directly an essential oils experience, and in my case, it was with Aroma Touch, which is eight oils, not just one drop of one oil. It's eight, eight oils all in one hour. It was so phenomenal, and I was like, now I get it, because before it was all just kind of nice. And so I experienced it like that. And had, in my case, it was even like a spiritual experience. I'm Christian. It like expanded me sort of spiritually. Uh, you know, like when people like you were doing their prayer meditation time and you get that expanded feeling with God, yeah. you're connecting with spirit and that, you know, like that wisdom. It's not yeah. like out from left field, but like wisdom with God. It was like that. And I'm like, oh, wow. It accelerated that and expanded it. And I was like, I want this all the time. <laughs> I want this weekly. I mean, not like you have that, like, every time you take an oil. Um, but I was like, I want that kind of experience. I just knew spiritually immediately. That I was like, I need this. And I'm a coach. And I was like, and, my, and then also the Holistic Chamber of Commerce. So I have, you know, my sort of protégés. And, and I don't think they're all my protégés. But, like, I'm a leader of leaders. And I was like, I at least need to let people know about this so they can pick and choose themselves. But where the folks who are my clients, really God has given to me, I was like, I need to let them know because this is something that they need that for their self care too, for their business. Cause that's something a lot of people, we're talking about it more now, but you know, a few months ago, people weren't talking about it as much of when you are a coach, when you are a mentor or those sort of roles, or if you're a mom that we need to make sure to do extra self-care for us things that we like maybe before like the supplements or things like that we kind of thought were a luxury they are now a necessity and even more so now with with what's going on with the pandemic of like things that i was like oh yeah that's kind of nice to do and now like oh that's essential oh yeah i have a protocol um and um yesterday or not yesterday the day before because i was off work for 11 days and i knew the we would be getting contact with patients with uh, confirmed cases or, you know, symptomatics and things. And um, I was away from it all. 
like when I talked to you and I was in um, Oregon taking care of my own daughter and I came back to where I'm at in a smaller town in Texas where I'm at currently and they tra they had two they have two ICUs and there's like one floor and the second floor and the one floor is transformed there's two floors the hospital's transformed just for the COVID suspected patients and positive patients so if they have like we said if it quacks like a duck and a waddles like a duck probably a duck so because it's yeah. not the tests sometimes are coming back um, negative uh, they're also taking a long time to come back um, and when they're showing that they are so they're sometimes they're having to test more than once um, to get oh, the, wow. correct, the correct oh yes it is um, so um, and my thing with your April like you said what self-care is just crucial a daily routine to because yeah. there's the media wants to say that there's some kind of um, gonna be some vaccine or some drug well first off I'm like what we use Tamiflu for which Tamiflu is a great drug um, it can be there's a lot of side effects to it but it is it, you know they did and it is effective um, has been effective with the flu virus so to speak it's not from what I'm seeing Personally, this is just my personal, it is not effective with the COVID patients. Um, oh, wow. so antiviral things. And so your immune system can take care of this, but there are people that are just immune compromised. And so that's why I think what yeah. we're doing is to, is, is to protect those people that can protect themselves and our healthcare system that could be just, because there's going to be a lot of people that, are walking around and think they're healthy. There are a lot of people that walk around yeah. that think they're healthy and they're not inside. Yep. Not, not at all. I, it's one of the things, because I'm over on Facebook, as, as a lot of us are right now. We're, we're over at Facebook a ton. And it's one of the things that um, I'm here in Orange County and um, a couple of the local groups that I'm in, you know, and there's like, it's what it was like 10 days ago. People would just like mildly grouse. Oh gosh, we saw people over here. Oh ha ha, they're just being so silly. And in this last week, the tone got strident. Uh, there are stronger words too. I just want to say because it it's a podcast. Is yes. um, they got really? They got really? They got? It wasn't just bitchy. Because I have a girlfriend who's a teacher, and she's seen stuff for like where she is, and she's being strident. Um, and I'll say like strident and strong mm -hmm. and they were just being super bitchy and other words that I can't even, like think of. Um, they're just really being jackasses and, and making that the predominant tone. And, and what people don't realize that you're twofold is that it was like one, I understand what they were saying and it's true. So we were grouching about it at the Facebook group as extensively as they were. You know, it's one thing to like do your little post and like, oh yeah, great. Now I've now I've got my now I've vented. Okay, I go on. But they were coming back and keeping their posts alive to vent um, and to be to be really bitchy about it. And that wasn't actually constructive. It's like if there's a place where people are congregating. I think it was like a week ago, it was like a Disneyland, like in a parking lot. People were coming and congregating too close to each other in the parking lot because they don't get to be in person in the same way. It's like, call the police, let them know, let them do it, bitching about it at the Facebook group repeatedly, on and on and on, isn't constructive, isn't constructive. And then no. secondarily, I know you know this, but this is my hypnosis side, is when the brain, there is science for this, I can't think of one, but there are multiple doctors who like evidence to this of where when we are stressed, when we are grousing and grousing, we need to vent, you know, we need to ventilate a little bit, but when we are speaking negatively for an extended period of time, and like that is like how we are thinking for days, and that's our focus, we're actually compromising our immune system. Mm -hmm. We're putting the stress hormones into our system which reduces our immune strength. And and that was something where it's like, I can't go post that in that group. I can only post that on my timeline or on my business page um, because 
they don't know me. You know, it's like I can't go tell them that. They don't know me from Adam. They don't know I'm an award-winning hypnotherapist, all this. So it's like that's something people need to be aware of. It's, we can be stressed, and you can need to vent a bit, and then we need to come back to taking active steps to reduce and release our stress and tension, the stress and anxiety. And that's one of the things the oils are awesome for, too, is, I mean, I actively am using, I use balance and lavender regularly. I am making a point to use that every morning and again in the afternoon and sometimes just in the evening when Jordan and I are sitting here watching a movie together. I was like, and put some lavender on, just make sure at the end of the day, it's like washing our face or brushing our teeth at night. It's like, put some lavender on to reduce my emotional like whatever stress was yeah whatever was built up over the day like you don't even it's like i don't even like know what's there it's like don't worry about it just like put them on use some i do a hand diffuse i love the smell of it oh that was it too okay i have to joke about the lavender yeah so i literally i literally this is is like a hashtag i want to create you know it's like gives lavender a bad name it was, I grew up using, I love Crabtree and Evelyn. You can tell it's like a scent oriented person, natural scent things. I love their rose. They had lavender and other places had like lavender room spray. I never cared for it. It was like, eh, who cared? Um, and I have like some potpourri people have given me of lavender that were the dried flowers. I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's kind of nice. No big deal. So even though I had the doTERRA lavender, I didn't even use it right away. It wasn't until I was doing like a little hand massage on someone else with lavender because they wanted lavender um, at, a, at a thing I was at back around um, the Christmas boutique time. And, and it was all over my hands. And after like putting them on for them, I'm like, it's all over me. And I was like smelling me. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> and that was just like all of the, the doTERRA oils. When we say essential oils, we do mean the doTERRA oils because they yeah. are – the highest grade of potency and purity. Yep. Other ones are all wannabes. You know, yep. everything they're, is they're quality. Like, the popularity of oils is because of the doTERRA oils. So if you're getting the other things and you're like, who can yeah, there's nothing like, well, who cares about like, if you get it at like Walmart, Target, or Amazon, it's, and you're like, eh, this doesn't really smell, who cares about this? It's because it's not that level of potency and purity. It comes from France. This yes. is the best place to get lavender from. I want to talk about co-sourcing. You can do that in one of your other talks, but it's like, it's amazing. And so when I'm using it and it has that level of fantasticness, that's what I'm getting. And that's what's getting into my system. Yeah. Yeah. And the other ones. And so I just like, I, I mean, I like to put that out. It's like the other ones all give lavender a bad rep because, and then people smell a room spray or they use a potpourri and they're like, and so they hear about lavender from doTERRA and they have the other thing around and they're like, who cares about lavender? It's like, this is not the same. This is the doTERRA lavender. This is the doTERRA oils. Yeah. It's like Kleenex for tissues. You know, it's like, it's the standard. Yeah. Well, I think it's actually compare. I don't know how we can compare that quality is just, it's ridiculous. And it's funny during this pandemic, doTERRA is low and out on things too right now. People of doTERRA, the community, which is millions all over the world that use their product yeah. are like, okay, man, I'm, I'm stepping up my, my self care regimens. And I was on today because um, there are some things that I take daily of theirs and I use daily. And I'm like, I, I, if no one had said anything in other Facebook groups, like you said, were like the turmeric, um, capsules i think i have a couple of them left um, i still have a few left too <laughs> um they are unavailable right now so it's these little yep. things and um little god scent um curcumin and tumoral this one is yep i love it um i think i have a little left i don't know and i'm like i am going to post in somewhere or i might even call deter and go hey when do we have an expectation of when that's going to come back in I didn't see that it was going to um, be low, and now it's just gone. It's unavailable right now. The oregano yeah. roll one is unavailable right now. A lot of the on guard, well, the on guard spray is back. Um, 
the on guard um, products, are, some of them are gone, some of them aren't. And so yes. it's free. Yep. It's it, it, those people are no, this is uh, we need to step it up for ourselves and uh, we need to step up for our family and we need to step yeah. up for our self care. And, and my thing is, is that I plan to do a Facebook Live after we're done here before I continue cleaning because it's just going to clean today. Um, oh, yes. People need to deal with their stress being stuck inside all day. And then if they've watched the news, I, when I yep. was gone for the 11 days with my daughter, purposely did not watch any news. I heard about it yep. some, a little from people, but purposely protected my mind. Um, yes. I, and so this is a time I where too. if you, if you're into a coach or you have a coaching program, dig into that. I don't have that time luxury because I mean, I got back and they're like, oh crap, this could be difficult for us. And we could yeah. be, um, I was told possibly 16 hour shifts and four days a week. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Ah, and then my I do just to let you know as a gift. Yeah. I know people don't have the time and not everyone has the funds either right now. Like, of course, you know, one of my specialties is with sober clients, you know, who want yeah. to get, you know, get or, or retain their sobriety yeah. is it's one of the things that happens is with all this stress, the folks like whatever, like I need more brownies right now. It's like, yeah, thank you. Hello. You know, we all have our compensations. They're kicking in a little bit. People where that's an issue is kicking in even more. So I'm doing a, um, I'm doing for for that. I've been doing um, an EFT a tapping session Friday and Saturday night at my Facebook page, um, 6 p.m. Pacific time, to um, just for free, you know, to, to bless people. And like the last rotation of the tapping is for sobriety. So like anyone can be on, you know, and anyone can just hold that space, even if it's not an issue for them. But pretty much like Monday through Friday. Uh, it's usually around like 8.05, 8.15, somewhere around there. I've been doing a daily guided meditation. And and, they're all, and then the recordings are there at my page. So it's like with your schedule, if you're like, April, I can't be there. You know, it's like it's there. The videos are there. Just click on one, sit down, you know, fast forward a few minutes because I talk for like the first five or ten minutes or so. The last 10, 15 minutes of that video is the guided meditation. Yeah. And so it's like, just listen when you can. And it's necessary to do that kind of a practice as often as we can. I would say, I'm going to say daily, which means, you know, we aim for daily. And if then we get it like four to five days a week, God bless, we did great. You know, if you only managed it once or twice a week, you know, that's awesome. Whatever you're able to do is appropriate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. You, yeah. It's so important. Actually, I'm going to do put on a Facebook and I'm going to, um, I feel the same way. I feel that um, I am working I, um, unless I get, and then I thought this this morning, I was like, well, if I get the virus, cause I'm like, I'm bound to be like, we're get, being covered and you know, but like I get an N95 mask and I have that N95 mask cause it's airborne for the week. When we used to wear these N95 fasts and we would change the mask going back and forth, I have it on consistently. Yeah. I came home last night from yes. work and have had permanent marks in my face for hours after yes. my job from my mask. I and remember I those photographs from the staff and the, the nurse, the medical staff in China. I remember those photos from a month ago. And we were all like, oh, these poor people. And oh, that's. 15,000 miles away from me and it's like it's down the block can I just do one little pitch here and it's not for yeah. us yeah anyone who's listening if you are able to please 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 go donate blood donate plasma donate platelets yep the need is greater and many of the places we were formally donating like at our workplace the Red Cross was was partnering with um, and no, they are practicing the social distancing. So you, it might take a few days to get an appointment. Please make an appointment because like we're giving blood, you can only do it like once, like every six to eight weeks. Platelets, I can give them weekly. I can't get in every week. It's, it's just a matter. And like with plasma, I can't remember. Uh, I think it's like AB negative. You have to be a really specific blood type to be able to give whatever you can do 
please do it. And I know there are people, I, I have clients, I have folks on my page where um, they can't, you know, their own health, they can't, they're in one of the high risk groups. I understand that. God bless, totally fine. It just, if you can, please, please, please and do. I, but eat I agree. Greens, eat your yeah, because it's funny because we talked about medical treatments yesterday with the uh, um, hospitalists yesterday, and I didn't even bring up some of the things that I really think that could be being done that they're just going to shun their head at. Um, but and I, so I talked to the pharmacist, and I'm like, well, we know that this would be helpful, and no, this would be helpful, but it would be. He goes the he goes the hospital would be broke in a week if we did those things. These are specific, very invasive though, and expensive things. Um, yeah. And I, I could share that not on this podcast. I would share that in my zoom call when I, yeah, just, it's not, I mean, I understand they can't, they may not be able to, it's like in an ideal world, it would be great if we could do absolutely everything. It's not feasible. Yep. Yesterday I was only able to get one small bottle of Clorox bleach and I'm like, I got it. And, and it's one of these things. So we were talking before about like the oils and not being able to get absolutely everything. One yeah. of the things doTERRA is doing is it is giving priority to the starter kits yep. and the, they um, the, uh, the L- they're, known as, they're known as LRP kits. It's like sort of yep. like your, um, your, the rewards program for people yep. who aren't, you know, aren't, aren't customers yet. Just like to use like normal person terminology. It's like a subscribe and save kind of a thing. If you want, if you yep. want to buy it, like a particular thing uh, every month, uh, you don't have to, you know, it's just like if there's a thing you want to get, you can do a subscribe thing on it is they're giving priority to that. So it's one of the things I usually really like to do the oils neat, where I just do it straight. Mm-hmm. I am actively doing the diluting them more now and doing the, and I, apparently you, you absorb it better this way too. So I like to do both, but I'm trying to use, um, make what I have last. It's the same thing with the bleach at home. It's like, don't just like pour it on the thing, dilute it with water, you know, put it, put a little, put like a capsule in like a bucket of water. Well, so it's all the mentality of what I have, make it last. Bleach needs to be diluted, period. I have taken care of a patient years yeah. ago that injured their lungs cleaning with straight bleach. And I fear that's going to happen with these people that are wanting to go overboard with bleach. Yeah, and, they don't know. Uh, it, it is a very harsh chemical to your body and will kill you. Just yeah. breathing it in could kill you. Enough of it. Okay, so um, there, there needs to be precaution. I don't have bleach at, work, at home at all. I don't feel like I need it. Um, I have bleach at work, and I'm enough all around it there. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you, have it, you needed it for work. We just have it at home. My partner is older, um, and he's, his health is good. It's just we're just being cautious where – after we go out or do things, it's, we're just doing things like wipe the door handles, yep. um, that kind of thing, where it's like, you know, and the door, like when we got food delivery, it's like, do, do the mailbox, you know, do the door buzzer. Uh, we're not going overboard. And, and I know, because funnily enough, I did volunteer work for a season for about like six months to a year at a Christian conference center um, years ago up uh, in Northern California, uh, by Clear Lake, and uh, it's the largest freshwater body in California. So it's this beautiful area. I used to just go up and volunteer. They had the big industrial kitchen, and that's where I learned to use bleach to sanitize. But what they did was like it was like a like that like a size container of like a large that super large yogurt thing people get like for their house, like that size thing where it's like three or four pounds of the cottage cheese or yogurt that much water to about like maybe one capful of bleach and using that just to like to wipe the surfaces down that's the kind of thing I learned to do so like yeah you know we do that periodically and if when when we go out that's what we do with the door handles and and that's where people if we can't get wipes you can do something like that um, in in your home for the surfaces where if you've had exposure, like I brought groceries in yesterday, excuse me, I was super careful, washed myself, washed my hands, sanitized my hands, took a shower, washed my hair, did everything, and was careful with the counters, you know, and, and I didn't bring my bags into the store. I didn't even bring them in the car. I just like brought them to things directly home and then you clean the things and you get home. 
So it's not, it's the, we want to take care of our, people are thinking externally with the bleach or disinfectant and then doing nothing to take care of their immune system and their stress level. In my mind, when I talk about the stress level, I'm, I'm including, to me, that's part and parcel with my immune system. So that it, mm -hmm. if I'm only taking, if I'm only taking a vitamin, and this is something I know you, I'm sure you've talked about this, the thing with the lifelong, the, the supplements we have from doTERRA that's unique is the, they contain essential oils. Mm -hmm. So we actually absorb them. So a lot of us have done like supplements over the years. You know, I, I, I was told by my doctor to take a basic one and I did, but I'll be a little direct here is when we go to the bathroom, you can see from your urine that, yeah, Hey, I didn't absorb all of it. My, <laughs> I do not pee technicolor green anymore because what I'm taking, the doTERRA supplements, my body is actually absorbing it. So I'm taking care of myself internally as well as all of the stress and all of those wonderful tools of the oils in my body to reduce my stress, to feel terrific and genuinely have a robust health. So if anything happens, my system is as strong as it can be. And I'm not eating terribly. You know, I'm like, I'm enjoying my brownies. And I'm doing kale. I'm doing spinach. I'm doing greens. I'm eating very nutritiously in addition. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, that's something I'll, I will, I made up a protocol with um, my one of my assistants. And we, we put a sheet out, especially people that are higher risk. So now it's anybody with that is my thinking is the high risk is ones that think that, well, there's a lot of people that are high risk for COVID, but um, they were saying the elderly, but I, I even go beyond the elderly, <laughs> but then there's people that can't take our supplements. Um, um, people have chronic kidney disease. They have to be beyond cautious. Um, and then there are a lot of people that uh, don't really even know you know, that they're what, like yeah. said, their insides are. So, and they're just freaked out. And I think, um, I'm, I have not been even scrolling that much social media. My, as my husband tells me, he tells me stuff on social media. I was like, um, I, I just, I, I spent the time with, um, my family and now I'm back into work. And oh. I had that anxiety walking in first going, Oh my God, this feels like I'm walking in uh, something out of the movie into the Ziploc yeah. areas. Well, they were changing it. It was a Ziploc here. You change your clothes, you do this, you put all this on and then you do this and then you go down the ICU and all the IV poles are out like they did before and they have extensions so they can have the doors closed that are glass, they can see them, but they have all these IV poles out here. Everybody is in masks. Um, and then it's um, wiping over and above. Everybody's wiping everything down back and forth. Um, they don't want to stay in the room long. So think about the patients that are not intubated. They're not going to, they're going to be just as scared. They're going to be fearful and scared inside there. So it was just this, uh, yeah. um, walking in and I was like, I need to control my emotions. I was like, I've coated myself with oils on my neck for my emotional support. Um, yeah. I needed it because it was a little intense for me. Um, at first, I'm like, whoa. Of course. Um, Even Will Gordon, if people, if they haven't been in a situation, I was in the emergency room at high, not high risk things, but at high stress levels with my late husband with the cancer multiple times. And it's, I'm, pardon me for interrupting you, was, and is it okay for a moment? Yeah. I, see, I've learned to ask permission now. I have some politeness. And as I'm from the Northeast, we consider a dynamic conversation. He was from the South. He's like, April, that's called interrupting and it's rude. I'm like, I'm sorry. Was, I'll get so excited with something. Was in those sort of situations is we need to be regularly applying. I mentioned lavender. We have a oil called adaptive, which is this amazing blend. And it supports your having that kind of, I can manage my emotions when I need to in a high, high stress situation. 
there's also we have a whole emotions kit where it some people will look at like one think oh i need that one of like the like two or three of like the whole kit of it will appeal to them and what i know from the hypnosis side of like our chakra system or endocrine system like medically is um that it's we need the whole kit and just apply them over your heart and it will give you tools so that when you want to manage your emotions you actually can as opposed to i'm completely lost to them the thing i wanted to add about that was i know you're christian yourself as well we, we talk about our faith a little bit is i knew spiritually i got this from god thank god i got it because i did not know it on my own was i brought my bible with me every time i went to the emergency room with jim because I knew the situation was high stress in the environment. And I'm saying this for you so that you can just bring it in internally. I know you can't bring books in with you, and a lot of people can't bring that in with them now. So it's like, pick a couple of scriptures. If you can bring your phone in with you, go over to blueletterbible.com and have it scrolling where you can scroll it. Read from Psalms, Psalms in particular, because it is both for Christians, it's for Jews. So it's like a lot of people love the Psalms, you know, regardless of whether they are, would describe themselves as being Christian or not. They hear the Psalms and it's like wonderful. It is a, it manages your mind and you are putting God's word over that space and speaking it in that space. And God's word is protecting and it's like a whole energy and, and um, a touchstone. It's like this giant boulder of to lean on there where they are because they are going in. They are panic-stricken. They are incredibly stressed beyond means. They are truly, deathly afraid of dying um, alone in all of this. So cloaking that space with his word, with the word of God from Psalms of his praising, is just spiritually supercharged yeah yeah and you're i have to do that for myself we we talked that yesterday when we knew a patient was yeah. crying last night and all of us felt like we can't let their family come in and see and be with them when they die and so this is very unique in the situation yeah. to how we're treating people than we've ever treated people yeah. in the hospital system before and not even just people with covid i'm i have um i'm i'm connected to some folks who are much older here um in orange county and there's a man in um a, a club that i'm in where he's i believe has stage four cancer i don't know if i would say he's dying right now but he's certainly in the hospital and sick right now his wife of many years cannot be there in person with him and some people are like, oh, that's so mean. They shouldn't be doing that. It's like, do you not understand? And they don't, you know, and it's hard to express that to people with a strength that's just clear because when they really get the clarity of what the situation is, they freak out. Yeah, I, I, I it, it's so, it's my, that when I was um, in Oregon last week and my daughter had the baby, I couldn't be there. And I'm like, FaceTime me. You know, all I could. Great. Thank God for technology. Well, she didn't FaceTime me during. She did like text me back and forth until like, um, so, and then I heard about it afterwards. No, right after she had the baby, she FaceTimed me and they had to take the baby to the nursery and she was just in right. tears and, um, just all the emotions of just giving birth and then having compli a little complicated. Right. And FaceTime, I go, why don't you FaceTime? your boyfriend who was with a baby so you can see your baby and the baby immediately calmed down hearing her voice that way too. Of course. Of course. And so, um, that is the way we have to communicate right now. And I don't know when that's going to ease up. Um, and I still think when it eases up, people are going to be on edge. And, um, I think oh, yeah. in, in some sense. And so, um, if this is a time where I think this is why I want to do zoom calls with people and just check on people. And this is a time too, where, yeah. you know, what? if you 
haven't been at risk or whatever, but you know, when you're in the community, you can do someone for someone else. Like if your neighbor is elderly, your neighbor next door, you know them, hopefully you don't, or you do, but if you can get them something, or if you know someone that's in need of something, this is a time really to come together and do something for them. And um, I was telling my husband, I'm like, if we don't know that many people here, but I know a couple of people who might know somebody. So uh, that's what I decided to reach out and go, okay, well, you know, I'm still at work. I will wipe everything down if I have to go purchase something, but I will purchase groceries for somebody if I need to. Um, I'll be out in public before they should be out in public right now. Um, and I will go on above beyond to do something like that. I will put these in the mail. I'm going to do a Facebook live and I'm going to do a zoom call with people and I'm going to give oils that were support your um, emotions and um, I love the smell of, um, that I roll on me all the time. I'm going to give them to other people because yeah. I, um, it's something I can do. This is what I can do. So whatever you're listening to or watching this, what can you do to the people that are around you? And maybe their people, we can kind of ripple this ripple effect of kindness and appreciation and doing yes. something for everybody else. And I appreciate, um, what I've seen a viral for the healthcare workers. I have not seen it at the hospital I'm at. Um, where they come up to the cars and Thank they're God. honking appreciation. No, they gave us, um, somebody gave us Starbucks. And I was like, well, that's appreciative. We, all of us nurses will um, live off coffee. So um, we appreciated coffee for certain. I'm like, if there's a company that's still delivering um, food, shoot, send it to us a little way over to your healthcare workers. Yeah. But don't send us, um, yeah. don't send us sweets. I'm not eating sugar. Sugar will actually tax your immune system. So I if, keep it at a very low minimum. Um, yeah, because right. it, it's also messes with your emotions. I believe the sugar. I'm sure you right. feel the same. For me, I'm saying this is a caveat for people who are keeping sober. Is my being sober is paramount. So mm -hmm. if I have some stress and I feel like eating chocolate, it's like fine. I'm not eating five pounds of chocolate. I'm not eating the family size. I didn't even bring, I'm like, I'm making a batch of brownies and I'm making it last over several days. It's like, fine. I have some, and I probably ate a few in one day kind of thing. It's like, yeah. I'm, I'm saying that for like a range of reality. Cause like, I don't want people to also hear like, Oh God, everyone in doTERRA eats perfectly. And oh, they're all so perfect. I, I can't be like that. I guess it's not for me. It's like, Oh, I'm so not perfect. So it's the, it's like, I'm doing it better. Uh, and I'm doing what I can. And this is where I am. I'm two years sober so um, if, and I have clients where they are more newly sober and I tell them that too, I was like, you are keeping sober. If, if you feel like you're eating like a little bit of a comfort food, you know, have some, you know, don't eat five you know, pounds of it. It's the have this, not that it's okay to do a little bit of a compensation. I do a comfort food is okay. Small amount and, you know, keep it in, keep it in check. And keep doing the, you know, it's like I have friends who are like, who are like the fantastic cooks. And I'm like, well, what's easy to get right now is the brownie mix. By like, by the end of April, I will have learned how to do like the non-sugar and the healthier version. But what I could get right now is that. So it's like, yeah, give your, yeah. you know, it's okay to give yourself a break uh, while keeping with reality of like, okay, and keep working on doing things to do it in a healthier manner. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. That's what I, I know you're, so you're said about sugar. I was like, I'm just letting people others know that it's like, if you didn't quite manage that, you know, God bless. <laughs> yeah. 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 I totally, I, I absolutely get that. Um, so I, I, we have talked longer than we were supposed to on this podcast. We have covered so oh, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah. And I mean, just want to thank you, April, for, because you talk about, um, your experiences in natural health. We are supporting and how to support other people right now and um the emotional support you're you're right there with me when it comes to it and it, it's the time to do that right now so i appreciate your you know telling your story about how you got into natural healing how you pursue it and it's a daily thing and little habits and things that you do and then how um yeah. how the oils have really been a blessing for your life I and mean, right now i mean yeah if I didn't have them, I would be a mess. Yes. I would not be able to be what God has created me to be, to be a beacon to shine my light. That's a hashtag I'll use all over Facebook is shine your essence. 
I want to shine my light, which is all it's, I don't say that in a weak me way. It is the light that shines through me is divine light from God's heart to all of us. And I would not be able to do, and you wouldn't be able to do your job and what you are here for doing, being the amazing blessing you are without them. It equips me and it expands me. I'm approaching this holistically. It really is mind, body, spirit. Literally, when we say essence, it's the quintessence of the plant. We are getting what is sort of like the spirit infusion from the plant. It's mm-hmm. not just like, oh, this smells nice, nice, so I feel better. I actually got the physical attribute of the greatness from that plant or that tree resin or all of those things into my system. I got tools and resources into my physiology and I'm adding this for today because of what we're dealing with. Pray scripture. Bring God's scripture. Don't just put them on your wall. Pray. I'm actually going to do this later today is walk around my home where you can, like on your breaks, if it's appropriate, if you can at all at the hospitals, is pray God's word out loud. Bring it into that space. We need to shine that. We also need that as like a cloak of protection because sound Scientifically, sound, a sound wave, we can't even measure where it ends. It goes out so far from the planet. Sound goes on forever. So as we are praying that in saying God's word, we are bringing that in and literally cloaking our homes and cloaking our environments with that mm-hmm. so that he can do a supernatural work and we need it. Oh, I, yeah, Absolutely. Um, absolutely. I think that's, um, I think of my, um, a a friend who I want on the podcast right now, who is a house supervisor nurse right now, um, and working ridiculous hours, who's going to be on my podcast and been working the front lines longer than me right now. And she covers herself with it and covers herself with oils because, and it's funny because it's, we're not saying anything that's different word that was done in the Bible age. They would have it. Right. For God's time, they would um, it, they would have um, frankincense, the incense burning, and they would get a closer connection spiritually with God. There's yes. God, something there, guys, to your spiritual connection. I feel so, um, yep. absolutely. And um, um the Bible app is great where it can read to you. And so the Bible app is incredible that it, you can put it on and it can read to you, and it can read to you in. Oh my gosh! Inversions and languages that are beyond us, and um, so that's I like to start my day in that just covering. Um, and oh, you know, awesome. what, coming together in on uh, church online. I did it this morning, and and next week being Easter, um, we should just hashtag that and share it on social media more. You know, come together online. Let's just overwhelm online yeah. and come together. Whatever way you worship and whatever church you go to online do it. Um, and let's do it yeah. globally and let's just, um, let's just prayer through this prayer yeah. and order through this. Naomi, <laughs> Naomi, may I, for, may I, can I, um, do I have your permission? I want to share my, um, my page over at Facebook if people want to connect with me later. Yeah. Um, we'll put happy, it in the I put that in my thing. So it's my name. It's April, like the month, April Braswell biz. So it's A P R I L. B R A S like Sam W E L L Biz B I Z. So that's my page over at Facebook, and I do those Facebook lives Monday through Friday, a little bit after eight, like about eight oh five or so Pacific time. The guided meditation, and I ask people because I know they can't always necessarily stick around the whole time. I always ask, please put your prayer requests in the comments. And I go back, I, I can't always do it right there, but like I go back over the course of the day, I go back in, I reply to the comments and wherever there are prayer requests, because I'm a coach. So I'm like offering to help people with coaching um, and you know, the small business coaching too. I have folks in the holistic sphere where they are things like um, massage therapists and that their business is to be in person and they can't do it right now. So they are shut down from earning an income. So I'm coaching them and just giving it for free for ways that they can earn some money. And I'm just mean doTERRA money, but like from like there are things they can do online 
with their business, the, with the practice that they do, I just give that for free to be a blessing. Do I have your, may I pray over you right now, please? Oh, yes. And I, I would love to have the show link. I will be one that one in the midst of it all. I will definitely check out more of your Facebook um, page and um, we can work together with it. I think it's uh, the time where we awesome. need to up and come together and support. Yeah. Our people. There are way too many people we need to support. Yeah, I put posts up there too that are motivational. I put some scripture things up there usually at least like once or at least a handful of times over the week so that it is just to be a spot of hope and encouragement to uplift people because we need it. And to be real, you know, I'm like, I show up without makeup sometimes. So it's like, yeah, that's, that's life right now. So yeah. Lord, I pray you bring in your magnificence and please, I pray a hedge of protection and gratitude over Naomi and all of our healthcare workers, my sister-in-law, Sonia, my friends, the Edelmans, and the whole Caney family where they are in the trenches, on the front line. So many people, I pray a hedge of protection. Please shed your radiance, sprinkle that over them. Let that sink in, guard and guide and protect them. Scrub them clean of any virus, any germ that they were exposed to. Clean that off of them, protect them. Bring your spirit infusion, fill them and encourage them. Hold them close to your heart, Lord. I now also ask everyone who is inclined, who is Christian, where this speaks to you, please put on the full armor of God. This is a spiritual thing. It is a physical thing. We need that every day right now. There are others where they are just at the whim of their emotions. And so when something fearful comes in, it is like a tidal wave. It is like a tsunami in their life. Shine your essence, shine your life light forward in the world and let it be an encouragement to others. Refresh and refresh and refresh all of our folks who are on the front lines, refresh them physically, replenish them physically, let their immune systems feed their immune systems, feed their whole emotional lives so that they are well balanced and feel blessed and feel fortunate and able and refreshed and renewed and reinvigorated to go forth and fight this fight every day, every half day, every shift that they are on. I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and all the powers that be through you, Lord, spread your hands across the globe and hold this globe, this earth, preciously in your heart. Amen. Thank you so much, April. Thanks for praying over me. I also put that over all the patients right now in the hospital setting. I just speak the same thing because yes. they have visitors. They're uh, not, regardless if they're suffering with COVID or anything else that they're in the hospital for right now, it's a tough time to be in a hospital right now. It's a scary place yes. walking around a hospital right okay. now. I was always scared of it before. <laughs> so um, I, I just want to put that over all the patients right now too. And just Lord, that you will just be with them. Um, and Lord, let us yes, use the, the co the the ones that know you, Lord, that will be able to speak light to those who don't know you in the healthcare system that need you. So, um, yes. that's my call to action today. That is my call to action. Um, thank you so much. It's all going to be called the action to prayer. It's going to be called the action to serve. And I'm going to thank you, April. I'm going to hit, um, stop.